this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of their Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God. The heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire, against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Those words were from Second Peter, the apostle, apostle referring to how it will be at the end of time. And then in Deuteronomy, Moses <clears throat> wrote concerning the fiery indignation of the Lord God Almighty when he wrote, For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn into the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Then the writer to the Hebrews wrote this, he spoke of God's fiery indignation <clears throat> and that uh, the prophet Jeremiah also spoke of his fury that would go out like fire. Now for 2,000 years the Lord has extended the scepter of pardon through <clears throat> his prophets as they preached the gospel. He has seen them maligned, he has seen them vilified, ridiculed and persecuted and in many different ways, yet he withholds the sword of judgment and many are holding today contempt and scorn the promise of the Lord's return, just as the apostle Peter prophesied that they would back in the first century. But you know, dear ones, his resurrection guarantees, guarantees that he will come back again as we spoke the last time that we were together. Acts 17.31 speaks in this wise, God hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained and hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. And our text for today is from, is when the, when the Lord, when the Lord arrives. This is the Voice of Truth program coming your way. I'm the host of the program, Paul Fry. And we greet you in his name that had been so vilified and so maligned and so blasphemed in so many kinds of entertainment. But he is still God. He sees all that transpires on the earth. Nothing is hid from his eyes. He'd been long suffering for over 2,000 years. And one day, the trumpet will sound. And he will come back. And we'd like to just share today with you how it will be. May his grace, may his mercy be upon you as we extend you warm and friendly greetings in his name now that extends who extends the scepter of pardon and grace to sinners that are still in rebellion against him. The, my, our text for today, when the Lord arrives, the title is from 2 Thessalonians. The first chapter, the first epistle had to do um, much with uh, the reference to his coming. And there was a wonderful part uh, in there about how when the trumpet shall sound, 
the Lord shall appear with um, um, all his angels and the dead in Christ shall rise first and then those who are alive shall be caught up together to meet them in to meet him in the air and so shall they ever be with the Lord he's talking about his people his bride his church but now we see him coming in this epistle in judgment and with that as a background let me read the first ten verses Paul and Sylvanus and Timothy unto the church of the Thessalonians uh, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That means in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ means that they have come to faith. They have been born of His Spirit. The life of God dwells in them. The nature of God dwells in them. And so we see the union and communion. Verse 2, grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fit because that your faith groweth exceedingly and the, and the love of every one of you also toward each other aboundeth so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. The Apostle Paul is setting up the church of Thessalonica as a pattern for other churches uh, to undergo suffering of those who are hated by the world because Jesus said if the world hated me and it did they will hate you also verse 5 which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer it has pleased the Lord not that we endure suffering to to get into the kingdom of God but then after God and his grace has brought us into the kingdom of God through the new birth then the genuinity of our faith is tested at times by persecution and suffering. Again in verse 6 and 7, and to, who, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. Now notice these next verses. They are fearful verses. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire. And that's a picture. Fire in scripture uh, deals, uh, usually speaks of anger and judgment of God. And you are troubled to rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking <clears throat> vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of the Lord and um, of the Lord Jesus Christ who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Now notice what happens to those who have been vilified and persecuted and maligned down through the 2,000 year history of the church age. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. We would first like to speak, when the Lord arrives back, he'll find the same thing happening in the church as it has over the 2,000 years of the church history, that his people are being persecuted. <clears throat> but you know, I'd like to say, say I had mentioned earlier about the, sometimes God allows suffering to prove the genuinity of a believer's faith. But you know, it's good to see a Christian that is true to the faith in the times of peace. But that's true Christianity. But it's good and great to see a Christian, or to see a professing Christian, true to the faith in times of persecution and suffering. That is really the true Christianity. Let me ask you a question. When do the stars shine the brightest? Isn't it? when on a very dark night? When does the love and faith of God's people shine their brightest? When they are under the dark, dark clouds of adversity. Is the kingdom of Christ worth suffering for? Well, that was the desire of the Apostle Paul that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. To the Apostle uh, Paul writing to the church at uh, Philippi said th uh, these words. He said, 
and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which to, is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Philippians 1, 28. <clears throat> and Romans, and Paul writing to Romans, said this, The children of God are heirs of God, yea, joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Then he said these words, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in, uh, in, the, own, in, in the Lord's own. It's not worthy to be compared. <clears throat> um, I can remember one verse I love very much in Second Corinthians. Though our light affliction be for a moment, yet it's working in us a far more eternal weight of glory. And you take notice in the first part of those verses uh, 2, and um, yes, verse 2, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father. When the Lord gives suffering grace, when the Lord gives saving grace from his throne of grace comes all the grace that we need. Uh, whatever our situation might be in life, his grace will always, always be sufficient. And not only that, but he will always send his angels uh, to be ministering spirits to the, those who are heirs of salvation, to those who are true believers. Now you might ask, uh, in fact, Psalm 34 says, the, the angel of the Lord encampeth around about them who fear him, who fear the Lord. And so in God's grace to his people, and, and uh, in four verses speak to the suffering of the church of Thessalonica, um, God's grace will always be sufficient, that grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ to go through whatever God might allow to come into your life. <clears throat> And then uh, you might say, but why does the world hate Christianity so much? Well, they hated the head of the church, the Lord Jesus. Why did they hate him? Because he testified that their deeds were evil. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, but men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. That's why Christianity is hated, and that's why the Lord said it to his own in the upper room. The world hated me, rest assured, it will hate you as well. You see, in this church, though, at Thessalonica, persecution did not affect their faith at all, but it proved the genuineness of, of the faith. And then it says in verse 7, And to you are troubled, rest with us. Now, we spoke of uh, other verses that referred to the persecution and tribulation. And to you are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed. I'd like to just speak about his appearing the Apostle uh, Paul, in his first letter to the Thessalonians, said that his appearing would be as a thief in the night. And the Apostle Peter, in second, and the book that I read from to begin the program, uh, said uh, in verse 10 that again, that he would appear as a thief in the night. In other words, it would be very sudden. And when will that be? No one knows. That's none of our business. Our business is to be ready, to be waiting, to be watching, to be working. But this much we know, we have an inkling in Luke 17, verses 26 to 30. It speaks about in the days of Noah, uh, they ate, they drank, they planned, and so forth, until Noah and his family entered in the ark, and then the floods came, then judgment came. And then with uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, before God rained fire and brimstone upon them, it says they ate, they drank, they planned, they built, they tore down, until Lot, and his family was taken out of Sodom, and then the Lord rained fire and brimstone from heaven. And by the way, and you mark, mark it well, the fire and brimstone that God rained from heaven upon Sodom and Gomorrah, and this nation is being turned into a Sodom and Gomorrah in an unmistakable way, they are an example of those who suffer the vengeance of eternal fire from God. God has uh, allowed himself to be maligned in so many ways. Um, his word is tramped upon and vilified, not even to be allowed to be shown in a public place. Do you think God don't see that? Well, we'll speak a little bit about the long-suffering of God. And, so, um, and then Jesus said this. He gave those two historical events to say this. 
That's what, where it's going to be when I come back. Now, when, when the last soul has been brought into the kingdom of God, then he'll come back. And he'll come back not as a suffering servant. No, no, no. Not as one that would be spit upon and uh, mocked and abused in a physical way like no other man. No, he will not come back in that manner. Um, we will, in, in our next, <clears throat> um, as we go on, we're going to show how he's going to come back. Um, I'd like to repeat an old, uh, an old saying by a reformer of years past. I said it before, but I'll repeat it again. All that evil against himself and all the evil against his, uh, God's people, and remember this, when the enemies of Christ persecute his people they are touching him and don't ever forget that you can mock a Christian you can <clears throat> say anything you I mean the people of the world they've done it in, in this past hundred years probably there's more martyrs than of all church history put together but you're touching him but God allows all the evil activity he regulates all the evil activity of Satan and his ministers to accomplish his own divine purpose so the greatest way to glorify God is to be a martyr for Jesus' sake. And notice what the, and when he comes back, every, when, the first, when he came back the first time, very few people were awake. They were sleeping, nighttime. They weren't even looking for his return, except a few shepherds and a few wise men in the east. But notice when he comes back again. He says, Behold, he cometh in the clouds, and every eye shall see him. Every eye shall see him when he comes again. And they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Revelation 1, 7. Then, he, then the Lord goes on to say, even so. Amen. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the ending, saith the Lord. Which is, which was, and which is to come. The Almighty. The beginning the beginning he created all things and he will bring all things to an end but for those who love his appearing what a blessed day that will be now his appearing as we said will be in majesty and power in flaming fire when the Lord descended upon Mount Sinai he descended in fire and the whole mountain shook and Moses said I exceedingly fear and quake and the, the people said do not allow the Lord to speak lest we die Revelation 6.15 speaks about the high, the mighty, the proud, the poor, all classes of people that had defied the word, the majesty of God, the creator. It says that they hid themselves in the rocks and the dens and they cried out, Oh, cover us, cover us, don't let us see the face of the wrath of the Lamb of God. For the judgment has come. And also he says he'll come with these mighty angels, his attendants, what will they do? They will gather the elect from the four corners of the earth, the east, the west, the north, and the south. His bride will be brought together. Those that have fallen asleep, as we saw in the first epistle to the Thessalonians, they will be raised up, and so those who are alive will be caught up together. They will be all brought together as the people of God. No longer maligned, but they will be brought together in glory. And the, and the angels will also gather up all the criminals you know, those who are perished still in the ground, they'll be raised up, their bodies will be raised up. And all that are alive, they will all be brought for judgment. The sheep will be separated from the goats, the, tares, the, wheat, the wheat will be separated from the tares, the godly from the ungodly. And as we have sown in this life, we shall surely reap. And then the great judgment We've been referring to that all along. Then those who had been slain for the word of God and the testimony which they, they held and cried, How long, O Lord, can you imagine God's people? And he said, How long, O Lord, how long <clears throat> is a, a man going to vilify your name and your people? And then it'll come to pass. They were told to rest and wait for the others until they also experienced martyrdom. You know, man, because God does not execute a sentence right away. The heart of man is evil to continue on these evil ways. And what is a greater evil than to raise your hand against the people of God 
and against the word of God and against the name of God. <clears throat> Acts 9, 4, you remember I said when you uh, touch those who belong to the king, you touch him. When the Lord met uh, Saul on the way to Damascus, he said, why do you persecute me? Paul Saul was persecuting, Saul of Tarsus was persecuting the church, but they were, he was persecuting the head of the church. <clears throat> In this world, there's much injustice. In this world, uh, the criminals think they can get away with everything because it's not brought to justice in the court, but not in that day. The world will, in that day, witness divine justice and divine mercy. And <clears throat> it will be acted. And then, I would also like to say about verse 10. When he shall come again to be glorified in these saints and to be admired in them that believe because our testimony among you is believed in that day. Yes, they will come to be glorified. The Lord will free from the suffering of sorrow, free from sin, free from persecution, free from being vilified. They will come to be glorified. There the Lord will hold them up as examples, as trophies of his grace. There they will no longer be spit upon by the world, but the world will see them being exalted. They were humbled, but now they will be exalted. They will be like the Lord, the head of the church himself. <clears throat> yes, they will reign with him uh, throughout eternity. The glory of God will be the glory of his work. He saved them. The glory of his grace. He redeemed them. The glory of his power. He delivered them from the powers of darkness. And then the image of God will be fully restored. That which was lost in the fall in the beginning will be fully restored. And they will truly mirror, mirror forth the glory of God. And the, uh, John, uh, the, uh, the Lord would say in the upper room before he went to the cross, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one even as we are one. No wonder in 1 Corinthians 131, let him that glorieth glory in the Lord. And now very quickly this application. What is our goal in life? Is it to, have it, is it to live only for time? To get the most out of this life, all we can? Or is it to live in the light of that eternal day? It's going to be eternal glory for some, eternal judgment for others. It is folly to trifle with your soul while the day of mercy is still here, while God is still extends the scepter of forgiveness, the scepter of pardon. If you will come, the only way you can come, the gospel way, and that is through true repentance and faith in this one that we're talking about that's going to come back in flaming fire. When God came down upon Mount Sinai, we saw the holiness of the law. That can be seen then. When he was lifted up at Mount Calvary, we can see the, suffer the demands of the law that was broken. <clears throat> so that now that when grace is extended to sinners, <clears throat> when the king arrives, no longer grace, but in judgment for the rebels of all time. When God sends forth his word, all that are in the grave will come up, some for glory and some for judgment. Have you been deceived by a false profession of faith? Have you just given lip service to the king who's coming back? Do you know God as he has revealed himself in Jesus Christ? Or are you like some of those that were in the church of Crete? They professed that they knew God and works they denied him in every good work they were bumbled. The life that we now live reflects either a life that is either bound for heaven or a life that's bound for hell. Whichever way, whichever way we are on, is the way we will step into eternity. This is not a pleasant subject to talk about, to have the Lord come back in flaming fire, to rod vengeance. That's the reason the Apostle Paul said to the church at Rome, when you're dealt with unfairly, do not repay. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. And so that if, I, if I'm talking to any of you today that Suffer for Jesus' sake. Just know that the Lord's in control. Just trust in Him. Find your refuge in Him. And now till we meet again, remember that you can call our number for literature, that is gospel literature, it's free. For um, our messages on tape that are free. You can call for prayer. Whatever, we're here to serve. We're here to give out the truth. And till we meet again then, May you find refuge in the Lord Jesus Christ. For when, he, when the king arrives, that's the way it's going to be. 
how much better to be received up into glory than to be turned away into eternal judgment. May God have mercy upon you.